Okay, so in this uh, video, we're going to show you how to make a scatter plot. And in order to make a scatter plot, you need two sets of data that are both numerical. And so we've got those two sets here. And as we do with most graphs, we highlight all the data we want to graph, including the titles. And we either go to Insert Chart or from the menu, choose Insert Chart. And so we're going to do that. Uh, it's going to give us some choices. And the one that we're going to choose is the one with the points on the bottom here. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. So there is our data. We want to customize this and see what kind of customization options we have. Uh, arm span versus height is a fine title. We can go ahead with that. If we, because we already have arm span on there, we don't really need a legend. So we can remove the legend. And as we scroll down, we can see what other choices we have. So we're into the, the horizontal axis. Height centimeters is fine. We can change that. Uh, so the labels are fine. We might want to change uh, the min and max. The min and max are actually fine in here. That What they've chosen are good from 150 to 190. Um, you might want to force this to ha show the zero. Uh, keep in mind that if you do that, uh, you have to do that for both the horizontal and the vertical axis. So we put them zero, uh, zero, zero. If you do that, however, though, you might end up with the data all in one corner, and so you might just be better off to keep them uh, the way they were at the beginning with uh, just maximizing the view. Uh, it really does depend on where the data is and um, what you want to uh, do with the data. So I'm going to go ahead and change the um, this back, the horizontal back to uh, the standard. Okay, so there we go. Uh, again, with the grid lines here, uh, this number uh, chooses the number of uh, grid lines. So the major ones are the ones that have the numbers on them. The minor ones are ones that will just show up in between. So in this case, uh, having grid lines, having five major grid lines is fine. That gets us to the span that we want. We may want to put some minor grid lines in here. And so we want... Um, probably the individual ones to show up and so um, now you might think that because we're going from 150 to 160 we want to use 10 as the value so when you actually zoom in here uh, and take a look at what 10 grid lines does uh, you can actually physically count that with 10 grid lines you actually get 11 gaps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 9, 10, 11 gaps to really show that we don't want 10 grid lines. We actually want 9 grid lines. And, it, and when you click on this, it's not obvious that you can put 9 in here. You don't see that as a choice, but you can actually just type in any number of grid lines that you want there. Let me actually type it in so it sticks and hit enter. And now we actually have 9 grid lines and 10 gaps. And so we want to do the same thing uh, for the vertical axis. Uh, we want to add in ten, nine grid lines, and so we do that, and we got nine grid lines and a full grid showing uh, for ver both vertical and horizontal. And so it actually uh, helps us identify where those individual points are. Now, on this particular graph, we can choose um, to. Um, Put the values on the data labels. We've done that in other graphs, but you don't want to put that there. That's just going to make the graph a little bit uh, crowded. Uh, that's why it suggests putting the grid lines on there, and that will just uh, give you the individual values, which you can find out just by putting your mouse over the, over the individual values. Uh, you may want to add a trend line. Uh, you can do that uh, at the bottom here and just choose a uh, trend line if you like that's linear or not. And that pretty much sums up everything you need to know for the graph. I'm going to put insert now, and we can uh, place that where we want, resize it, and it's all set to go.